All right, we're joined now by Maryland head coach John Tillman and players from Terrapins following today's win over Duke. Coach, we'll start with an opening statement about today's game. I'm sure, um, certainly uh, proud of this group. Um, you know, beating a team like Duke, who obviously just really talented, well coached, um, have a lot of personal respect for, for Coach Janowski and his staff and the program. Uh, one of the best around. So, uh, to beat a game, game like or beat a team like that, um, you know, you certainly have done something special. Um, so, um, you know, these guys obviously prime examples why we were able to pull through. It wasn't the, the prettiest game, um, and we haven't been the prettiest team at times. Um, but we've had a lot of kids just fight and scrap. Um, so, uh, just proud of the guys the way they hung together. Um, you know, when we got down, uh, no one panicked. Everybody was staying positive. These two guys were, were two of the best. Uh, I thought our leaders really stepped up. And certainly when Luke wins that many face-offs, um, it does help make up for some of the mistakes that we had today. Um, and it gives your offense um, just the ability to overcome some mistakes. And I thought Duke's defense uh, was really, really good. They gave us fits. Um, but when Luke not only wins face-offs and is able to turn a couple of the goals, that, that kind of let us hang in there for a while. And that's what we talked about at halftime was just let's – Let's just like we're, we're probably playing as poorly as we could to a certain extent. So let's just reset and like try to win the third quarter. Um, and then we were able to do that. So now it was like now with two goals, so it was manageable. Uh, and then we just had to play a really good fourth quarter. But super proud of the guys. Um, just awesome to have another week with everybody. Questions? Hey, uh, John, after Hopkins and Penn State, where you scored in single digits, now you've had 30 goals in the past two. Just kind of what, what's clicked or what, what, what you figured out? Um, you know, I think, you know, those games, you've got to give credit to those teams. Um, you know, that, that, that Hopkins game was just kind of a really slow tempo game. Um, I think both teams kind of had long possessions. Um, and, and they're very good defensively, um, and I thought our defense played really well in that game too. But I think the tempo of that game was not going to be like it wasn't going to end up being a really high-scoring game, just you didn't have that many possessions, and um, you got two great goalies. Um, so uh, that maybe played to some of that. Um, and obviously, you know, out in Ohio, we just um, you know just didn't play our best, and you know, kind of look at you know maybe the way I prepared the guys or the way we practiced, um, what we did to set those guys up. Um, so we took that time after the game and kind of talked to these guys. We talked to them every week and just kind of talked about all right, how can we set you guys up for success? Whether it's how we practice, um, what we do during the week, uh, how we travel, uh, what we're practicing, what we're doing, uh, who we're playing, because uh, we value their feedback. And we always know, like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it together. It's not the coaches making all decisions. The best teams are the ones where uh, the leaders are really pulling um, everybody along. So um, I do think we've had some guys step up as well. Um, I thought we played a lot of different guys today, a lot of different combinations. Uh, I thought Danny Maltz was terrific. Um, and that was huge for us as well. So, um, you know, it's it's not always easy against all the te good teams we play, um, and, and you just got to kind of have to stick with it. And uh, I think our guys have. John, uh, coach, uh, just talk about what was like the one moment that you think turned the game around for you guys. Um, I don't know if there's one per se. Um, you know, it just I think just the guys. You know, just. I think getting in that fourth quarter, that third quarter, and then we got one, um, and we didn't let them get it to four, um, you know, right away. So it was like, all right, you know, we got one, and then unfortunately we just couldn't quite uh, catch up. You know, we make a mistake and they make us pay for it. Um, and credit to Duke, like we did have some mistakes, and we never play a perfect game, uh, but it just seemed like when we had a breakdown, whether it was offensive or defensively. Um, they just they capitalize, and obviously that, that tells you like they're a really smart team and a well-coached team. Um, but I think knowing that Luke just kept getting us possessions, um, it, it allowed our offense just to keep working and working. And I do think like you know it put a lot of pressure on the other team's defense because um, I know that happens to us. So. Um, it allowed us to kind of go a little deeper with some of the guys that we used today. Uh, we ran more guys out there, um, and I felt like we finally found some things that were starting to work. Um, so, again, I think that many possessions go a long way. John, it felt like this, this game kind of hinged on replay or no replay type of choices, whether it was Brennan's goal, 
late in the third quarter, and also the one you guys got. Like, how good a look did you have on, on both of those, and, and, and what kind of went into your decision to? <laughs> Dyson's, I was looking at the clock, and uh, I was kind of looking, looking, and you actually, the, the shot clock's like at a good vantage point, so I was kind of looking, looking, I knew it was under five, um, and I felt like he got it off, and I was kind of like, and Jesse said that the guys thought maybe it didn't, and then you're thinking, all right, do we review it? Because if you, you know, if you use that there and you blow it, then they're down to one timeout. And I felt like we needed all of our timeouts today. And if you end up, you know, burning that, you have one. And then if you use another timeout, then you can't challenge anything. So the timeouts are a little bit different now. Um, so I felt like that one was a goal. And I really felt like Maltese was a goal, but it was under four, so I can't challenge it. So that's where I was kind of running over to, and I was probably on the field, which is probably not a good thing. Um, but I was just trying to get their attention because I was like, listen, that, that is, we need to review this. It's under four, it's up to you. Um, and I think the officials kind of waited till they cleared it. And then once they cleared it, it kind of, all right, that got them the break. Um, so that then they could take a look at it. Because I think that was the difference with what happened at Syracuse with mm -hmm. the review is that it was kind of in between. It was in the midst of the clear. So I think they, they now are like, or do it right away or let them clear. And then, then you can come back to action and, you know, it's a subtle uh, piece. But I, I had a good vantage point on that one. I thought I saw the, the net move. Um, so whether it was or wasn't, as long as they looked at it, um, I thought it was important. It also gave us a kind of a quick change to go bring our guys in and go, all right, if it's a goal, it'll be a face-off. We're up two, three minutes left. If we win it, here's what we want to do. If it's not, all right, we're on defense, and here's what we want to do. We're up one. So there were definitely a lot of things. I thought we could use it as a timeout and just get our guys prepared. Our guys were just so excited. It was hard to get anybody's attention, which <laughs> I can't blame them for. Here at for uh, Ajax and Luke, after Dyson's goal off the failed clear, to go nine six late in the third quarter. What was the mentality message with the players that really kind of allowed you to stay in it and get over the hump in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I don't think it was anything, uh, you know, so much like motivation or mentality. It was just like we just got to get that team to six on six. Uh, Coach Bernhard and Coach Tillman put in a great game plan um, to set us up for success. When we get them to six on six, they're a really dangerous team. Uh, when they're in those unsettled early offense situations. So really biggest thing was just getting to six on six. And I thought we did a good job just sticking to that. Um, obviously, we have all the faith in the world in Logan McNaney. So, you know, anytime he makes a mistake, we know he's going to flush and get the next one for us. And it's all just about sticking together. And I think Coach Tillman did a great job echoing that. You know, every time we kind of bring it in, we are asking us what the score is, 0-0, zero, zero, things like that, uh, just keeping us very, you know, down to earth and, and in the moment. Luke, how how did the mood of the team, if, if at all, change when you score those four straight goals in the third quarter, opening the fourth quarter, and you go up 10-9 for the first time and take your first lead? Yeah, I mean, I'd say we definitely were feeding off the crowd behind us, um, which was huge. They were amazing. Um, but kind of just like Coach said, like, we were just kind of hard to get everybody kind of on the same page because we were all really excited. <laughs> yeah. So there's good and bad with that. Um, we were just trusting the guys in the huddle, like, Everybody take a deep breath, like this game's far from over, and just like getting the guys on the same page and just reiterating like the little things we gotta focus on, like keep keep protecting our sticks and things like that. And um, that's what we were kind of just reiterating the team and how to get everyone focused that way. Coach, I like you bring a defenseman in and, and a number 52. That was my number <laughs> when I played in college in Pennsylvania, by the way, at Franklin Marshall 43 years ago. Luke, when you were walking off the field, I happened to be right there. And I said, I know you're going to come back. It was 8-5. I said, 52, you just keep winning those face-offs and scoring those goals. It, it was a tremendous performance in the second half. 11 out of 15 face-offs, you won. And I asked Coach Danowski if that was the difference. And the finality of losing was devastating for the Duke team. Tell me about your performance and how you felt about it today. Um, I just think we had a great week pre preparation. I thought our game plan was unbelievable. Um, I thought our scout team all week, I mean, they just, the work they put in is unbelievable. And, like, can't thank those guys enough for what they do for us. Um, I think that's kind of why the result in the field happened. Like, I think that's the biggest part of it. I also think, you know, a lot of those face-offs, 
you know, Jack McDonald, A.D. Larkin, George Stamos, Jack Horace, like those guys came up with huge ground balls. And like, I mean, I think we, we had 30 not, 36 ground balls. So kind of just everybody had to play their part, did their job and kind of played into the role and the game plan that we had. Lucas, kind of where I was going, 20 to 29 for you, but you had eight ground balls. How does that speak to that, that group, as you mentioned, that unit as a trio winning face-offs and it's not just the one guy taking Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's chemistry for sure. Uh, I think our chemistry has just been, you know, getting built each and every week. Uh, we, we have sections of practice. We really focus on those wings and those face-offs, and I think that's gone a long way, just building that chemistry with guys. I thought our communication was unbelievable, and that's what we really were stressing on before the game, um, just communicate, over-communicate. And I think that went a long way. For, for both Luke and Ajax, you both have been part of Final Four teams that didn't have a ton of bumps in the road along the way to get there. This season was obviously a lot different. Is this a Final Four appearance that maybe you appreciate in a different way than those other two times? I mean, yeah, I'd say our last year here, so I think you appreciate it in a different way. I mean, every year is different. New guys, I'd say um, we were lucky enough to play with some great players, and, you know, we've been playing with. We have a great staff and just they prepare us so well. Um, and, and, you know, the players before us kind of laid that foundation. You know, don't get too high, don't get too low, just stick to the game plan and things like that. And I think, you know, that's why it's special just because, you know, we're trying to do our best of what we were taught, you know, when we were younger in those, in those games and those, those years we played. Yeah, I think it's also building on top of that, everything Luke said and more. It's, it's also like now we're those leaders that guys are looking to, you know, for us. Um, I mean, you talk about one of the best classes to ever come through Maryland lacrosse in 2021 and 2022. Um, you know, 2022, we didn't even have captains because all those guys uh, were leaders for us in every way, um, even the guys that never sniffed the field. So it's just like for us, you know, having guys look to us and knowing, okay, we were once in those shoes, it's, it's definitely kind of like what Luke said. It, I think in person with, you know, it's your last go around, I think it just gives you a greater perspective for everything. Um, and, and just greater appreciation. John, you mentioned Danny down the, the stretch and with Luke or Ajax, what a chime in on just how important was he down the stretch, but also Braden. It seemed like Penny was going step for step with him most of the game for him to get that switch and that ball and the opportunistic uh, rebound there. Yeah, I was just looking at the stats, like, you know, like with ground balls, like Jack Horse had five, Spanos had three, um, Irksa had five, you know, like they did so much in terms of like making some of those plays and scoring goals, but like some of those second chance opportunities were huge for us. Um, so, uh, you know, Maltzy, did, the game did start great, um, but he finished really, really well. Um, you know, we, we were struggling to get, get some leverage. Uh, their, their shorts and their close guys are so athletic. Um, and Ronnie Caputo does such a good job with that defense. Uh, I, I knew it would be tough uh, just because I know their guys and I know how well coached they are. Um, so it was just a matter of just trying to hang in there. But I think that like the second chances with the ground balls and the loose ball plays, rebounds, and then Luke getting some opportunities, like those were things that we, we talked about during the week. Like, all right, if you get those second chances, like that's almost like an unsettled opportunity, you know, like loose ball on the field or like a shot. Now they're not really organized. These might be opportunities for us to maybe get one because um, they, they are so buttoned up and they are so athletic. Hey, Jax, can you talk about the communication between you and your polls to stop the Duke offense in the second half? Yeah, I mean, they're a really talented group. Uh, you know, I think it goes back to not only what Coach Tillman and Coach Bernhardt emphasized all week. Of, you know, Coach Bernhardt obviously played, again, played with O'Neal, and then obviously, you know, scrimmaging those guys in the fall really helped us have that familiarity with them going into the game. Um, and, you know, obviously, big shout-out to Coach Stainbrook if he's watching that. Yeah. This, um, just, you know, over-communicate, communicate, communicate. That's been his, you know, harping on every time he comes and sees us. So it's really just boiling down. I think we're, we're really hitting our stride. It's, it's a great group of guys. We all love being with each other, and it's, it's a different group. Um, you know, it's not a bunch of, of I wouldn't say alphas um, like we've had in the past, but it's just a great group that loves to come to work every day and, and scrap with each other and then hang out with each other outside of it. And that's been the biggest thing is just, you know, building that off the field has allowed us to have the success we've had on the field with it. Obviously, we got to clean up a lot of things, but, um, you know, it's just trusting our short stick matchups, talking to them through everything. And then when we are able to run three LSMs out of the box and four guys down low, 
Um, you talk about depth and man, it's one of the biggest things and it's really allowed us to do a lot of things and, and stretch ourselves thin, so it's been great. Uh, Lou, kind of those uh, two goals for you in the first half, given the somewhat kind of lackluster start for the offense, when you won those face-offs and really kind of had that open lead, did you really feel a sense of urgency or importance to really kind of go towards the cage and really score for those, on those goals? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we just, I just kind of was taking what was given to me um, and just kind of given, given the game plan. Like, we went down once, I think it might have been the first quarter, I they did slide and I threw it to Daniel Kelly and he got a good look. And I was kind of just playing off of what they were doing. Um, and yeah, I think it, it does help when, you know, we kind of push transition every once in a while and can get a goal like that. I think it gets the guys, you know, fired up. And when we make good decisions and it, and it turns into that result, I think that goes a long way for sure. You guys, for the players, you guys were talking about the finality of things, like the last one and how important that is. I mean, you guys were, had your backs against the wall there, especially in the second half, just coming back. Was that in your mind as motivation to kind of get the job done today? Uh, I mean, I think it's always in your mind. I mean, we know it's our last game going into it, but I kind of talked about it earlier. You can't get too high and can't get too low. You kind of need to stay level-headed and just fall back on those little things, just reminding guys that, you know, even a guy like Eric Spanos, like he's still a young guy. He redshirted, like and just reminding him, like, hey, they're gonna throw over the head checks, to protect your stick, and he's like, all right, yeah, and just just kind of reiterating things like that to guys and just doing the little things well. Um, we kind of just stressed, you know, at the end of the game and kind of just stuck to the game plan really. Any other questions? Last one. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a, there's a lot of motivation going into the final four, but is there any added motivation that's either Virginia or Hopkins coming up for you guys? No, I mean, I, I think both those teams are really great. Obviously, we'll watch the film on that one. And, you know, anytime you get to play a team twice, that, especially when you lost to them, it doesn't very, really happen often in life when you get a second chance opportunity. So that's going to be obviously the message through the week. But at the same time, it's we just got to focus on us. I think coming out, starting game strong, uh, I thought we did a great job of that. And Princeton kind of got away from that today. And, you know, big shout out to Coach for kind of keeping us, like I said, very grounded, level headed. Um, through that because obviously it's a, a quarterfinal games and a lot of those guys haven't played in, in that moment before and so you know not letting the moment get bigger than yourselves obviously we have some experience for guys that have played uh, in final fours and everything like that and and me Weirman McNaney and other guys but at the same time a lot of those guys haven't been there so you know just echoing on hey, at the end of the day it's just a lacrosse game I think coach Tillman said this in the huddle like just don't get away from it. Something we've all been playing for years. Um, you know, we just gotta stick to what we know and, and just keep playing like Maryland Terrapins. And we we've had our share of bumps along the way in the games. Uh, we had our little adversity a couple of days ago on the trip up. I'm glad yeah. we're in Philly. Our bus, one of our buses broke down. <laughs> um, and the guys handled it great. Like we was like, all right, what are we gonna do? We were on the cross Bronx, and you know, so it was like, what are we gonna do? So we ended up Ubering, and the guys handled it great. Like they didn't bat an eye. And again, I think that's part of like the ups and downs of the season. You know, some has been good, sometimes it's not been good, but the guys just didn't flinch. You know, it's like, all right, this is what we got to do, that's what we got to do. We had to change practice, we had to change dinner. And the guys like just didn't miss a beat. And I think at this point, when things aren't going well, like I think the guys can just roll with it. You know what I mean? Like it's not what we want, but like they don't focus on that. It's like, all right, well, what can we control? Like, what can we do? Um, and then just, you know, to, like, we'll figure it out. So, again, to me, that's like, you know, we joke those are going to be stories that those guys tell 20 years from now, like literally being stuck um, just over the George Washington Bridge and trying to figure out, can we send a bus back? Can we send another one up? And it was like, you know, like 2 o'clock, so the traffic is starting to build, yeah. and we're trying to figure out, can we practice? And, um, a great situation. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse, Jesse was like, I, I don't even know if an Uber will pick us up. We're on a bridge, and it's like the cars are whizzing by. No, the first two were like, they pulled up, and they we were like, can you take us? And they said, no, and just drove off. So I got out to the next one. Yeah. And so we were like, all right, well, we had to cancel practice. Yeah. We were supposed to practice like between one and three at Chaminade. So luckily, Thomas O'Connell, one of our alums, moved practice to six, and then we moved dinner bed. But it was like, all right, fellas, this is these are life skills. You just got to figure it out. <laughs> got to things don't always go the way you want, but you just got to roll with it. You know, and make the best of any situation. I thought those guys handled it well. Again, today was a prime example. Like things weren't going well, and Duke, Duke was doing a great job. I think Logan in that first quarter, five saves, like that was huge for us because. It definitely was not going well. Yeah. Uh, they were definitely taking it to us, and I think Logan's five saves like kind of let us hang in there. And your goal, 
uh, or it could have gotten away from us because uh, they they were playing at a great speed and executing, and we were definitely kind of trying to play catch up. So. Thank you, guys.